Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. We are on the road and we're actually heading up into Michigan. Our good friend Pat Magalano from Mag's Custom Rods is hooked up with a guy that, now this is very interesting. I have never done this and I love to fish lake trout. He's sight fishing giant lake trout. Like we're talking lake trout from anywhere from 30 to 37 inches. Them are giant trout. And to be able to sight fish them in about 20 to 25 feet of water, that is incredible. It, he's already there all geeked up, calling me every 10 minutes, where am I, where am I? And we are for once running exactly right on time. Hey, it's gonna be a great show, I'll tell you that one right now, no matter what happens, but I got a feeling a lot's gonna happen. So everybody, hang on to your hiney. Time to set up the Eskimo. I am so stoked, I'll tell you what. You know what, Scott, I'm pretty excited. You already got the hole cut here. And you know, in Wisconsin, we can't fish out of a hole unless it's under 12 inches. So, but you guys can basically cut as big a hole as you want. So what are we really, what, what are we looking for? You know, I know when you got a hold of Pat, you said a lot of big lake trout. So in your mind, what is a big lake trout? Without me stepping in the hole here. Well. You know, 34 inches is master angler, so. That's a big lake trout. I mean, in, but I average like one in 10 that are okay. master angler here. That's one in 10, yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it, it seems like it to me, but I don't know any other species. That, I don't have to know any other species where I can go out and catch, expect to catch master angler fish, you know, on every other or every third day. You know? Yeah, that's, that's impressive. So let me ask you one more thing before I set up the Eskimo on here. And where did Pat just get a cheeseburger pulled off from? <laughs> we stopped at Burger King. Oh, that's <laughs> what it was. That's what you guys are doing. It's a little frozen now. A little frozen's okay. So I gotta ask you, like on a good day, how many lake trout will you see? I'm not saying catch, but how many will you visually see come in? Uh, a bad day would be, I mean, talking like maybe six hours of fishing, a bad day would be 10. Hey everybody, I'll tell you what, hang on to your heinies. We're gonna set up the Eskimo and start fishing because Pat is stoked, he's feeding his face, you know, ready to rock and roll. Let's get it done. I'm excited. Oh, nice job, Pat! Woo! Look at that! I'll tell you. Oh, 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 look at that! That is so cool. That is absolutely epic. We had two big lake trout come in at one time. We've been. Oh, we've been in here for about probably a half hour, and we just switched to Scott's bait, and I just put a shiver minnow down, and two of them came just flying in. Look at him, like a little kid in the candy uh -huh. store. Oh, 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 he's too big, he's too big, holy kids, what are you fit in the net, it's a giant, oh, yeah, that was cool, dude, yeah. oh, man, <laughs> to be able to see these lake trout, and jigging them in about 20 to 25 feet of water, that is, he absolutely slurped that thing right up, right off the bottom, just, Pounding that, yeah. popping like that bottom. Gonna... That is a beaut. Nice job, Pat. Yeah, this is what it's all about right here. Man, so cool to be able to come out here and do something different. And 
And again, just to, to sight fish for lake trout. Yeah. See ya, girl. So I got a, um, a 40 inch medium heavy rod. And, and like what's the, the reason for the, uh, uh, for the medium heavy? I like, uh, I mean, you can get by with a medium, but usually you match your rod to what you're fishing. So usually I'm fishing deep water for lake trout, so I like either a medium heavy or a heavy because it's got the backbone to set the hook. Okay. But this shallow, you could use a medium, medium light and still have a blast on them. But you tire out the fish, you, you want to get these fish in and get them released quick. Makes a lot of sense. But a medium heavy with a rod that's, you don't want a fast action, you want something that absorbs the head shakes. So like this rod, it'll bend almost to the handle and you know, with the big head shakes of a lake trout, this rod will be perfect for it. And uh, man, when it comes to lake trout fishing, that's, I was like getting butterflies when we were getting close <laughs> here, getting like, oh, that. I can't wait. And uh, yeah, to get a fish like that. That's something, to be able to minutes. see the fish come in, yeah. and actually see them hit the bait. That medium heavy is perfect for anything up to 100, 120 feet, but when I fish deeper than that, I like a heavy. And it's still, it's a moderate fast action. It bends real nice deeper into the rod. Okay. And uh, it's just perfect. And when it comes to lake trout fishing, I, I really like to um, dial it in. That's what I love to do. So, man, that was pretty That was cool. something. Yeah. It's amazing how many times you fish a species like lake trout or walleye, whatever you like, and, and you go to a different body of water and the bait that you really love and have a lot of confidence in, a lot of times might not be that key bait to catch numbers of fish. Yeah. Well, I think the cool part about fishing the shallow, Scott, is obviously you get to see how the, the, the fish or the lake trout are reacting to your baits and really what what how they actually, most of the time, actually end up hitting it and what it takes to get them to trigger. Yeah, that was a pretty dang cool. We'll put her back down there. Oh, kind of looks good. It does look good. I... thinking is, you know, I'm pretty stoked up, got a decent night's sleep, we got a great cabin here, and uh, you know, we only got the fish for about maybe an hour and a half last night, we got in late, and uh, of course Pat is in the bathroom giggling like a little schoolgirl, which he is, um, he absolutely caught a giant, we saw about three or four other fish, uh, lake trout, but uh, today is definitely the day we're going to give it a full day. Boy, I'll tell you what, we're going to eat good today and we are no doubt are going to catch some big lake trout. So hang on to your hangies. What is the key to getting these fish? Uh, we got here last night and had maybe like an hour, hour and a half to fish and we ended up seeing five or six lake trout. Pat caught an absolute giant. Uh, so what is the key to it, at least getting these fish to bite? Because I know some of your friends are out yesterday and they saw, you know, a fair amount of lake trout, but they just didn't want to bite. Yeah, the bite wasn't, it just, it was really unusual yesterday that the, that the bite wasn't good. And uh, I don't know, that's fishing. I can't. It is. I was hoping you were going to say that because, you know, it's no different than anything. You know, the unique part is, you know, obviously at home we're all watching Vexlars and you can see these fish come in, come out and they don't want to hit. Well, this is a little different story. You're actually seeing the fish come in and you see, it's amazing how fast they come in. They'll circle around the bait a few times, come go out, come back in. And then sometimes they just, they're gone. And it's all about getting more people involved in the, in the outdoors. But you know, sometimes it's better not to really say where you're at. Mainly again, you know, because there's other places where you can fish and probably do the same thing we're doing here. Uh, it's just the awareness of knowing that these fish do come in shallow water like this. 
and uh, you know figure out a bite on it. Hat's set up a ways away and he's in about 30 and you think it's about six foot right there. So that this water is absolutely crystal clear. Hey, and just so everybody knows, Scott does not guide. He's not a guide. Uh, he, he just fishes out here with his friends. He's got a very unique thing going here. Again, that's why we're not gonna say where we're at. We're just kind of trying to protect this. No matter what, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So everybody hang on to your heinies. Let's see what happens. He definitely got him! Woo! Woo! Nice job, Scott! Oh, that is so cool to be able to see that fish come in and just absolutely slurp that bait in. Whoa! Wow! That fish came in so fast, we've been in here for probably a half hour. Woo! That was so cool, Scott! <laughs> Talk about doing something extremely cool. That is about as cool as it gets to be able to see these big lake trout come in and circle that bait and absolutely slurp that thing right up. That was epic for sure. Wow, nice job, Scott. That definitely deserves a sun drop. Uh, we're in our Eskimo hub shack here and we've got all the windows you know, closed and that uh, just helps to obviously to keep that sun out of the hole too. Um, but I think the key is, and again, kind of listening to what Scott was saying, is basically to really just start ripping that jig. Um, I'm either using a shiver minnow, or right now I've got a paddle tail on. And again, trying to get these fish to come into this, this spot that we're in. And doing some really high lifts where these fish can get a visual from a long ways away. But then once they do come in, there's no doubt, I mean, the pattern's definitely been dropping the bait right to the bottom and just kind of, you know, lifting it maybe about two to three inches and, and constantly tapping that bottom. It's kind of cool you're thinking about this. I'm directly over the hole right now here, and uh, I thought maybe that would spook these fish, but Scott's saying that this is the preferred way that he likes to fish here because it gives you a better visual as far as if they're coming in, you know, around the edge right there. And sometimes if the cadence isn't quite right, the fish are gonna do that. They'll come in, but not close enough where they're gonna be directly underneath you right here. So being able to watch out to the side is definitely important. Again, if you see that happen a lot where the fish are swinging to the outside, I'm either gonna start changing my cadence or I'm gonna start changing the bait. So, you know, this is one of them kind of things where, like if you're looking for a big buck, you can't really expect to see a big buck every five minutes. So I'm gonna hold my ground here and, uh, and hopefully connect with one of these giant lake trout. So everybody have some patience and hold on to your hindies. We just had like within 10 minutes, we just had four fish come in and uh, the, bot, the bait that Scott really prefers to use is confidence bait. Uh, I couldn't get him to react on it. So I'm gonna go to my confidence bait and uh, that is definitely a shiver minnow. And I'm gonna start it off without uh, a tail on there. But a lot of times what I'll do with these fish is I'll actually put on the treble hook, I'll put a small twister tail on there and it just gives it a little bit more flash fiber or a little bit, just gives it a little bit more flash but I'm thinking to myself maybe that's what they don't want because that paddle tail down there they definitely they'd come up to it within about a foot but that's as close as they'd get to it but at least it brought them in it's always about adjusting you know and that's the big thing when you see fish either on your vexlar or if you get the chance to vis visually see these fish like we are today um, I can't take it when you start seeing the numbers of fish coming in on, this, on the bait I gotta change things it's just nature my human nature. You know, one of the greatest parts of uh, the outdoors and people that enjoy the outdoors is that yesterday we were out here fishing and a guy and his wife came out here and started talking with us, telling some stories, really nice people. And she uh, said, hey, I'm going to bring you guys out lunch tomorrow. So I think they're going to be coming out at about 1230, bringing us lunch out today. So, uh, you know, that's kind of cool. Like. We didn't even, like, I don't know them personally. You know, they just met us and good people, and uh, she's a good cook, I hear. So I'm pretty excited about that. So hang on to your belly. I brought my lucky fish call for uh, you. Well, I could use that fish call boat now. <whistles> that, that sounds, that's a fish call. Oh, yeah. That official fish call? Here it is. It is, huh? Well, that's what I've been doing wrong, because it's been all morning here, fitchy, fitchy, fitchy. 
So the question's gonna be is who's gonna take over my fishing pole while I eat? Scott? Oh, these are warm. Yeah. They're warm. They just come out of the oven. Holy man. I was to hurry. You, you should get something to eat. Put that camera on. Built for fishermen, built by fishermen. Um, really, that says it all. It's the family here. It's, it's not a big, big conglomerate. It's a family. They treat you, you feel like you're in a family, you know. When you put those two together, an amazing product and amazing people, it's just the type of company you want to be involved with. Not only because of just the great boats, but because of the camaraderie that the Warrior family has. The customer service is amazing. Uh, they never leave you hanging. So come join the Warrior family. Hey, Shotgun Chef in the kitchen. Usually it's Leroy lunchtime, but today it's Leroy breakfast time. We stopped at the butcher shop in Horicon. I got thick cut bacon. We have breakfast sausage. We already browned the hash browns. We have Colby Jack, a little provolone. We're gonna show you guys how to make a quick omelet. I mean, the art of it is put the eggs in there, put cover them up. I'm gonna throw a little water on the outside, steam them, get it all cooked up, put everything in the inside, flip it over, and show you guys how to do this. I'll let it sit for like a minute and I'll go in my spatula and make sure everything's loose. And if it's not loose, I'll throw a little water to get underneath there and it'll bubble up and everything will come loose and then we'll build it all together and make this masterpiece. Good. Leroy's sausage, breakfast sausage. Hey, today when I ran in there, it wasn't even made yet. I asked the butcher, he's like, hey, give me one minute. And he came back out with a nice That's pound fresh. of, oh yeah. He said, I'll grind you something real fast here. That's how nice they are there. Little hash browns you browned up for me in there. All right, you ready? You help me? Oh, I'm on it. Keep calm. Keep I'm done. Ready? Ready? Flip it up. Let's go. Oh, oh. Nice. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. <laughs> Leroy breakfast time. This is, like I say, have the kids help you out. This is an awesome breakfast. Uh -huh. Bacon, sausage, hash browns. Give your taste. Oh, I'm working on it. I can't wait. Oh. oh. Look at that. Finally got one hooked up. I think it's a pretty good one. Hands down, my favorite fish to chase through the ice. Even open water, these are just a blast. Oh man, that'll get your heart pumping. But you're not gonna hook into anything ice fishing that's gonna pull like that. Oh, it's so fun. So I really try not to grab them by the gills if I don't have to. It's probably a 33, 32 inch fish, just super thick. Man, it doesn't get no better than that. It's all it takes is one to get you going. Oh, the afternoon bite's turning on. Oh my God. Oh, look, that's freaking sweet. Man, it was a tough morning and then all of a sudden they start eating. I haven't even been seeing them though. They take a really long time to get big and they get really old and you know they could potentially be a 40 pound fish someday so the more you let go the better chance you'll have at getting a true giant one day. Absolutely bracing when they come in. Pound's probably 32, 31 inches. Didn't fight very good because he got all wrapped up, but just an awesome fish, nice fins, super clean.
Hey, I'll tell you what, it is time to head back, and what a great trip we had with Pat and Scott up here doing some lake trout fishing. You know, I'm starving, and uh, one thing we do quite a bit is do fast food, and make sure if you guys, I've got a brand new truck here, or at least it's new to me, and I got it all detailed. I like to keep it clean. I can't think of a better way because we're always eating in the truck. Make sure you guys have your double towels in the single packs. Works out absolutely perfect. You know what, everybody? What an amazing day and a half we had here. You know, Pat really pulled through. I could not get these trout, as you guys could see. I could not get them to come in and commit. Pat has always been one of them outstanding fishermen. We want to definitely thank Pat from Meg's Custom Rods. We also want to thank our new good friend, Scott, for the accommodations and putting us on the spot there. We want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service that they give us and all of our law enforcement agents and firefighters and paramedics and all of you hardworking people. You know what? No doubt we are still living in the greatest country in the world. And yes, it is a great day to be alive. And the best part is we'll see you again next week. And I don't get treated this good at home, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Right? That, that's and that's, a, that's they, the truth. That's because they know you at home. <laughs> There's a point there. Right and if here. he eats this oh, chili. Oh, chili we're too? We're not going to be responsible for what he smells right. like after that. Yeah. So, anything else you want to say? No? No, I guess not. Right. <laughs>